Hello, it's Blake Von Karma here, back with another episode of RBY Bytes. Today I'm going to be talking about the time where Articuno was overused. If you remember my Parasite video, I talked about OU being bigger prior to the discovery. There were a few Pokemon that were OU during this time that aren't such today. Persian, Dragonite, Golem, and this video's star, Articuno. Now, if you follow the tracks strictly on Smogon, you'll see that Articuno was OU for just over a year. However, as is the case with everything related to Gen 1, the story behind this is a bit complicated. You see, sometime in 2014, on the suggestion of Oglamy, Smogon adopted Gen 1 tiers from a different website, RBY2K10. This site's tiering dates back to 2010 and aimed to re-tier the generation with a rapid man in mind. Smogon's tier list was becoming noticeably more outdated, and the original UU saw very minimal play. Due to the RBY player base being disillusioned with Smogon's lack of action towards their scene, 2K10 was created to make their own modern tiers. These tiers became the RBY community standard from then on, being supported by community veterans like Crystal and Issa for a long time. In fact, Pokemon Online even adopted them until players moved on towards Pokemon Perfect, a site that aimed to take the RBY tiering to the next level. 2K10's OU list was a turning point in RBY history as it raised Articuno and Jolteon to OU for the first time, the latter of which remains such today. The final list is sometimes seen as a definitive OU list for the pre Power Sub era. Let's call this RBY Silver Age, predating the fondly remembered Pokemon Perfect era. Arguments for Articuno's rise were peddled primarily by Water Wizard, one of the leaders of the site, as well as Crystal, Underboss, to Icy, and Posthuman. A big part of the rationale is that BL was intended to be a playable tier, and Articuno's power level was far beyond the rest of his cohorts. However, its place in OU also required justification, and these users did indeed provide. Water Wizard and Crystal would discuss Articuno's matchups against Alkazam, Rhydon, and Golem. Its Gengar synergy was also looked at in more detail, something that would indirectly lead to the production of a very powerful team by Amaranth a decade later. Another often forgotten point is that Articuno benefited from RBY2K10's battle on moves like Rap, as this also meant that Cloyster didn't have access to a clamp, eliminating team styles that are commonplace today. Therefore, Cloyster was far less common, giving Articuno one less one to contend with. These metagame traits heavily assisted with its rise to OU, which was cemented on June 9th, 2010. The main reason for all of this, however, is quite obvious. Stand Blizzard. Gen 1 Blizzard was a fantastic move, possessing 89.5% accuracy, 120 base power, and being backed up by Gen 1 Freeze being essentially an Oko. It was actually nerfed from Japanese versions of games, giving it a 30.1% chance instead. Articuno's Blizzard hits harder than an unboosted Psychic from Mewtwo, tearing apart teams very quickly if they lack a check. This forces very predictable plays from the opponent, who is likely to switch their Pokemon out to save off the Assault. Furthermore, Articuno is one of the few Pokemon that can reliably 2 hit KO Executor and Taurus, and it's among even fewer that can still make a body slam followed by Hyper Beam from the latter. So it's not just hitting hard, it's attack too. With agility in tow, Articuno is more than capable of setting up a late game and cleaning up without much that can really stop it. While never a popular set outside of the Chinese scene, Articuno is also capable of using a Reflect Plus Rest set to utilize its amazing defensive stats even more, playing more into being a tank. This makes it a decent check to Tauros, Snorlax, and even ride on a Golem, taking the strongest blows and hitting back brutally hard. The agility strategy is way, way better though. However, the rise to OU was controversial, and was not to be, with Articuno dropping to UU again with the 2016 viability rankings on Smogon. While Articuno has fair to excellent matchups against Tauros, Snorlax, Rhydon, Golem, and Executor, it's also among the most polarizing Pokemon in the game. Lapras, Starby, Jinx, Cloyster, and Chansey all take its ice-type attacks exceedingly well, and because Articuno lacks reliable recovery, it takes permanent damage from staying in and normally loses. Chansey became effectively mandatory on every team by this point in the game's lifespan, and while it was broken by, by Snorlax more frequently prior to the Parasom change, Articuno was still a non-threat until it was removed. Starby, while less popular at the time, has since catapulted above Executor on modern viability rankings, dethroning it from its previously uncontested place as a member of the Big Four. This basically reduced it to a Big Three, that being the three normal types, Taurus, Snorlax, and Chansey. Starby has a brutally good matchup against Articuno, having coverage with Thunderbolt while shrugging off even Blizzard with a cover. Finally, with tracking moves on Band, Cloyster experienced a rise in usage that came to a fever pitch in 2017, failing to denying any chance of Articuno rising ever again. Due to these substantial metagame shifts, Articuno's relevance dropped significantly, with more teams naturally becoming more prepared as they start starting using Starby and Alakazam more frequently to spread paralysis. Slowbro is often used as a standard for OU relevance. It's the best amnesia user in the tier, locking down game states comically early when it goes off, and only really losing to critical hits. 
If a Pokemon has more weaknesses and thus less consistency than Slowpoke does, that's a telltale sign it isn't cutting it, are you? As you would imagine, this was enough for us to drop back to Yu Yu once the 2016 Viable Tracks were released, dropping alongside Persian. Despite this, Articuno is among the most popular C ranks and overused. Most notably being a claim to fame on the famous Gengar Plus Birds team that Amaranth popularised in 2020, where it partners with Zapdos to take advantage of their almost opposite matchup spreads. Articuno rips apart conventional ride on teams, while Zapdos destroys teams that have Starmie in the back. It's taken some big names in major tournaments, and it's even promoted as a sample team. While Articuno was out of the running for overused, its drop to unused was also a bit complicated. It dropped on Smogon in June 2016, but on Pokemon Perfect's Parallel, to you, it was quickly banned in August on Onslaught Moltres. This was due to the counterplay at the time being relatively uninteractive. Its sheer damage output feeds on the lower power level, and any counterplay was made less consistent by the freeze chance of Blizzard. Its already amazing bulk was emphasized even more in to you as well, allowing it to win trades quite easily. It wouldn't see it unbanned until December 2017, when Tentacruel's true power was showcased and solidified by players like Lutsch. Tentacruel ended up wrapping the tier around itself, blasting everything with its powerful surf, and pivoting effortlessly with its 100 speed wrap. With the tier centralized around it, the birds began to look significantly less overbearing, and were soon brought down to unused, eliminating BL's existence across all RPI communities for the first time in over a decade. Articuno has since cemented itself as its cornerstone of offense in underused, with its freezing might being balanced out by water types already being quite popular in tiers as is. Tentacruel alone is mandatory after all. Uh, go, these water types must be weakened or ideally removed before it's capable of sweeping. It's very popular alongside Venusaur in particular, a somewhat late bo bo bloomer in underused, thanks to being one of the most reliable sleepers and a fair check to the water infested tier. So why not join the RBI Discord today and try out Articuno for yourself? Before we end this off, I'd like to give a heartfelt thank you to Icy, the original owner of RBY2K10, for reopening the forum's archive. The forum was down for around 7 years, meaning most of the game's history from 2010 to 2015 was inaccessible. Thanks to them, it's all been made available, allowing RBYs to navigate these ruins once more. I'll leave a link in the description so you can see RBY Silver Age for yourself.